Welcome to Nova Fencing Club. Today, we will be introducing you to the sport of fencing, its rich history, and its present. You will also have an opportunity to duel against various opponents and have lots of fun while doing it. The first sword-like weapons were created during the Bronze Age, between 3000 BC and 1200 BC. From then, swords continued to evolve to what we know them to be today. One of the earliest known descriptions of weaponized combat was in Homer's Iliad, which mentions fighting with swords, shields, and spears. The earliest archaeological evidence of a sword fight for sport has been found on the wall of an Egyptian tomb, dating back to roughly 1190 BC. Weaponized combat as a sport was popularized by Roman gladiator battles, in which gladiators were forced to fight in an arena for entertainment, often to the death. Gladiator battles occurred from 264 BC to 404 AD. In these battles, many different kinds of weapons were used, including swords. The Romans also made many developments in swordplay that helped lay the foundation for modern fencing. For starters, the Romans invented the gladius, a short sword used by soldiers that was far stronger than any sword previously used in combat. This strong blade allowed the Romans to develop new swordplay strategies, particularly the use of thrusts instead of cuts, because thrusts increased the likelihood of damaging vital organs. This strategy was later used in the Italian and French schools of fencing. Additionally, in order to practice sword fighting in preparation for battle, Roman soldiers used sticks with covered ends against posts and other soldiers. As time passed, the Roman Empire fell, and starting in the Middle Ages, a new use for swordplay became popular. Dueling. Dueling was a method for settling disputes through armed combat between two people. While these duels sometimes ended in a death, they were mostly fought in order to restore honor instead of to kill the opponent. In the Middle Ages, these duels were commonly used between upper-class citizens, particularly knights. During the Renaissance, dueling was a way for wealthy men to settle disputes. While dueling is commonly thought of as something men would do, many duels were also between women. Dueling remained common up through the 1800s. While originally done with swords, after the invention of pistols, duels with swords became less popular. But how did fencing develop into what it is today? The transition from military training to a sport occurred gradually, starting during the 14th or 15th century. Both Italy and Germany claim its origins, though Germany is where the first fencing guilds were developed in the 15th century. The three different types of Olympic fencing blades have distinct origins. Epe comes from dueling with lightweight European weapons. Foil was then developed from practice weapons for dueling. Saber was developed separately, from cavalry swords. In the 1600s and 1700s, three major shifts helped turn fencing into a popular sport. The first of these was the invention of the foil, a practice sword with a flattened tip. The second was the creation of a set of rules to limit target area, which helped regulate the fencing bouts. Finally, the third was the use of a wire mesh mask which greatly increased the safety of fencing. These set the framework for fencing to grow as a sport as opposed to a method of combat. The shift to the Olympic sport we know today was led by Domenico Angelo, who created Angelo's School of Arms in London in 1763, where he taught the aristocracy swordsmanship. Angelo and his School of Arms emphasized the athletic benefits over the violence of fencing and led to a shift of fencing away from a form of combat. Angelo also had an instruction book published in 1763, which contained 25 engraved plates demonstrating the proper positions from the old schools of fencing. This established the posture and footwork which was later adapted and used for modern Olympic fencing. The Angelo family ran the Angelo School of Arms for three generations and dominated the European fencing community for around 100 years, causing Angelo's views of fencing as a sport to become more and more popular. The first officially regulated fencing tournament was the Grand Military Tournament in Assault at Arms, held at the Royal Agricultural Hall in 1880, marking the beginning of fencing as a formal sport. The sport of fencing continued to gain popularity up through the first Olympic Games in 1896, where men's foil and saber were included as two of the original events. Men's epee was introduced in the 1900 Olympic Games. While men's foil was removed from the 1908 Olympics, since 1912, all three weapons have been in the Olympic Games. What about women in fencing? And women in sports in general? Well, now that you have a history of fencing, let's talk about women in sports and go all the way back to the first ancient Greek Olympic Games held in 776 BC. Prior to each of these Olympic Games, a separate event for women was held called the Herean Games, dedicated to Hera, the wife of Zeus. It consisted of the various running events, 
combat sports were banned. Women were also forbidden from participating in or even watching the actual Olympics under penalty of death. In other places in Greece, such as Sparta, women participated in sports and athletic training but were still considered less than men and kept out of the battlefields. As time went on, women began to be included more and more in sports. Eventually, women were allowed to participate in the 1900 Olympics, though only in a select few events. Boxing was the last Olympic sport to open to women in 2012, though some sports still have different requirements and regulations for men and women. Now, one-third of the International Olympic Committee are women. Women were allowed to participate in the sport of fencing rather late. Despite being involved in dueling historically, French fencing clubs only first opened their doors to women during World War I, offering separate classes for them in an attempt to remain in business during the war. Since then, women began participating more and more in fencing. Women's foil was first allowed in the Olympics in 1924. Sabre and Epe considered the more violent fencing weapons were deemed unsuitable and inappropriate for women, so they were added to the Olympics much later. Women's epée was introduced in the 1996 Olympics, and women's sabre was only added in the 2004 Olympics. Today, there are opportunities for women to fence all three blades at many different levels. There have been numerous famous female fencers, including Doris Willett, Marielle Zagunas, and Ibtihaj Muhammad. Some tournaments now even have mixed events, where men and women can compete together. In the United States, there are opportunities for women of all ages to fence, and the number of women in fencing is continuing to grow. There are also a wide range of opportunities for fencing in college, ranging from the club level to Div 1 teams, and fencing in high school can even lead to college recruitment. Overall, modern Olympic fencing provides many great opportunities for everyone. Who knows, maybe you will write the next chapter in fencing history.